Approximately one in 10 Americans have a rare disease. If you are struggling with one, we want you to know right now that you are not alone. And here to discuss more about the importance of rare disease awareness is Dr. Barry Byrne, director of the University of Florida Powell Center, and Monique, who has Pompe disease. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor, let me start with you. I read here that there are over 7,000 rare diseases. Can you explain to us first what is a rare disease? Yes, in the U.S. there are about 35 million people with a rare disease, which is defined as less than 200,000 in any specific type of disease. Patients experience physical disability, emotional difficulty, and often they struggle with a delay in diagnosis because of the unusual nature of the condition. And speaking of trying to find out the underlying problem, it took you 10 years to get diagnosed. It started off very simply, actually. My first symptom was a headache. I woke up and I just had headaches that wouldn't go away. Okay. So that just sent me to the doctors, you know, looking for everything from brain tumors to allergies. And I spent several months seeing different doctors trying to find the source of these mystery headaches. And finally at one doctor's appointment, I went to get up to leave after we had met. And he's like, no, no, wait, sit back down and do that again. Like, do what? He's like, get up from the chair, but don't use the armrests. You couldn't. I couldn't get up. And I didn't realize that I had been using my arms to compensate for what was clearly a weakening of my leg muscles. And so that started the journey into, there's a muscular problem here. And so they came up with a diagnosis of inflammatory myopathy, which is not an uncommon misdiagnosis with Pompeii patients. And I lived with that diagnosis for 10 years because it, it fit. Right. So my symptoms escalated over the years um, from having trouble climbing stairs, getting up from chairs, getting up from the floor. It wasn't until it got really, really bad and I started having trouble breathing. And then I fell because of the weak muscles, which sent me down a new diagnostic path. And, they, and I saw a wonderful doctor who said, no, you do not have this inflammatory myopathy. We spent another year seeing doctor after doctor in different locations, trying to come up with a definitive diagnosis. When were you finally diagnosed? I was finally diagnosed with Pompe disease in January of 2010. Doctor, explain to us what is Pompe disease. Pompe disease is an inherited neuromuscular disease that affects the muscle and the nerves that control muscle function. It leads to weakness and respiratory problems. And I think uh, Monique has a, a unique story, but not uncommon among the patient population that faces a late onset disease and often mimics other conditions that can be confused with Pompe disease. What is the average age of diagnosis? We often think of the newborn infant mm -hmm. that has severe heart problems that lead to early diagnosis because of the severity, but there are also a less affected individuals who may not be identified till their third, fourth, or fifth decade of life. All this misdiagnosis, the delay of time, what does that do then to the body, to the individual, and just the, the progressiveness of the disease? Inactivity and weakness uh, leads to deterioration, and the disease itself causes some progressive problems. But we know that early recognition is key. So how did you feel when you were finally diagnosed and you finally know exactly what you have? Everything started to make sense once I learned more about Pompe disease. I learned that the headaches were caused by a pulmonary issue. All my symptoms could be explained by Pompe disease. So I was ready with my due diagnosis to fight it. All right, stay right there. Doctor, thank you so much for that information. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we are going to meet Sarah Gonzalez, head of medical diagnostics at Santa Fe Genzyme. She's going to be here to discuss the importance of obtaining a proper diagnosis, which is so key. And later on, we're going to hear more on Monique's journey and how she's doing much better, hopefully. And we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We've been talking to Dr. Byrne, a clinician scientist whose research is focused on Pompe disease, and Monique, who has been living with Pompe disease for over a decade. We're now being joined by Sarah Gonzalez, head of medical diagnostics at Santa Fe Genzyme. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Let's talk about your role at Santa Fe Genzyme. I work within the rare disease division at Santa Fe Genzyme, and my role in medical diagnostics is primarily focused on 
finding innovative solutions to help shorten the diagnostic odyssey for the rare disease patients that we serve, including Pompeii disease. And genetic testing, and correct me if I'm wrong, it plays really a, a huge role in diagnostics, doesn't it? It does. It plays a crucial role, actually, in helping to rule in or out any inherited condition. Uh, a genetic test is a simple medical test that looks for changes in chromosomes, genes, or proteins. The AANEM, in speaking about Pompe disease, now recommends genetic testing for any suspected neuromuscular disorder, and that's for a variety of reasons. With advancements in technology, genetic testing is now more widely available, which has also helped to drive down the cost. It can help with disease management, with family planning. Uh, it can also help uh, patients get enrolled into registries or different cl clinical trials as well. That's fantastic. How many genetic tests are there? There are several. We've been talking about diagnostic testing when it comes to diagnosing Pompe disease. There's also carrier screening, newborn screening, and prenatal testing. To specifically diagnose Pompe disease, however, there's also multiple options there as well. Uh, typically, providers will order an enzyme test followed by molecular sequencing if needed. And Dr. Byrne, what role do physicians play in genetic tests? Well, the system to establish early diagnosis and using sophisticated genetic testing helps physicians identify patients early and then confirm those test results through the history and physical exam and then developing a plan for managing that patient's condition. I want to bring you in, Monique. What advice would you have for anyone out there who may be on this long journey or may have finally gotten a diagnosis today after going through maybe what you did? What if they're still say? on the journey to diagnosis, just never give up, no matter how hard it gets. Ask questions, don't be afraid to get a second opinion, and you have to be your own advocate. Absolutely. Any takeaways here, Sarah, that you'd like to share with our viewers? Absolutely. Genetic testing is really not that complicated. Ask your healthcare provider, they'll be able to guide you in the right direction. I do want to end with you, Monique. What does the future look like for Monique? It's filled with hope. With what they've talked about, with all the advancements in technology, um, the sky's the limit, not just for Pompeii disease, but for all the diseases and rare diseases out there. Thank you so much for your time. We wish you all the best. Thank you so much. I want to thank all my guests for this very important discussion. And for more information about Pompeii disease, visit Pompeii.com. And for rare disease resources and the latest news, visit rarediseaseday.org. You can always visit our website, and that's thebalancingact.com.